Yeah, how it's going today is uh, 24th of uh, March, Sunday, and we are taking a look at the market, what kind of opportunities are available. Uh, I'm debating, right, should I take a look at uh, one of the European companies, but I don't know that much about the company, and uh, I don't understand process, I don't understand that much of what this company does, and if it's good or it's bad, I don't understand it, right. I can briefly take a look at this company from my own understanding. But uh, I would rather take a look at the entire process of how government as of now functions. So perhaps I can take a look at the Australian government and uh, there's a leading body I, I heard <laughs> in Australia where they uh, offer a benchmark, right? So there's a government institution there which uh, where you can potentially purchase all medicine from. So uh, there would not necessarily would be private companies coming in to Australia and raising all the prices and uh, then consumers don't have nothing else to do since all the prices could be raised so there's a government initiative within Australia to have this company there who can be a benchmark for what price and where everything should be once that been said that's Australia and that's a model over there I heard about it but I don't know the process of the name of this company but I can take a look at that but before we do that, we can t uh, briefly, uh, let's take a look at what's happening uh, within the Europe. That could be uh, a valuation of the company is massive. I don't know why this company worth so much. <laughs> uh, I don't understand the sector that much, right? So I can briefly take a look at this organization. So I would myself uh, not be that I ignorant, so to say. And from there, let's progress to Australia. Let's understand the sales model when it comes to purchasing medicine, right? Briefly, let's take a look at this company. It's a private company, it's a business, right? So I'm not promoting this company. I'm looking to understand a little bit. It is because of evaluation of this company is massive. Uh, Novo Nordesk AS is a Danish multinational pharmaceutical company headquartered in Barksavayard with production facilities in nine countries and affiliates of or offices in five countries. Uh, UK is looking and or develop their own production recently within Oxford so UK is interested as well when it comes to producing its own uh, manufacturing medicine by the way <laughs> I don't know if it was in the past but as of now there is a project there in Oxford that they're looking to launch so because of perhaps the success of some of those companies out there so let's try to understand it uh, Novo Nordisk is controlled by majority shareholders, okay, which holds approximately 28% of its shares and all majority 77% of its voting shares. Novo Nordisk manufactures and market pharmaceutical products and services, so specifically diabetes and care medication and or devices. Its main products is the drug, okay, that's the name there, the, the perhaps people got hurt using some of this medicine, I don't know that, right? Used to treat uh, diabetes under the brand name, okay, it's in the, under the projects there. Perhaps so that's why the, uh, this organization or company is doing so well, but I don't know. No, this is also involved with, <laughs> okay, <laughs> uh, there's some more projects there. <laughs> Perhaps, I, I think if you uh, and all other uh, companies uh, working with people, it's very easy, you know, all kind of people can, someone can get hurt, right? <laughs> so I'm not looking to promote any of that. I'm trying to steer clear of all of that, right? But uh, on top of that, they're launching a number of different projects, right? And uh, some of those uh, perhaps performing very well. So even if I'm um, taking a look at some of the technology companies, right? To put things into perspective, right? So some of them, some of those companies in one month would launch products or services, perhaps a hundred. Out of a hundred, there, there are some bad ones, but uh, some of those uh, projects would uh, take off, so to say, right? Out of a hundred, every month, a hundred, 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 so to say, right? So th I think that's what we're taking a look at over here. But I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, uh, I'm looking to understand it, right? <laughs> no, no, this employs more than 48,000 people globally and marketed uh, products in 168 countries. The uh, corporation was created in 1989 throughout the merger of two Danish companies, which dates back to the uh, 1920s. Uh, Novo Nordisk logo, okay, okay. 
one of the okay so there's uh, some youtube there. <laughs> Uh, myself, I'm working on the book, and um, uh, it's something I'm <laughs> as of now. <laughs> but you do it, quick promo, right? But let's forget. The company was ranked 25th among the 100 best companies to work for in 2010 and 72nd in the 2014 or by a Fortune uh, 100 years or 500 in January 2012. Nova Nordisk was named the most sustainable company in the world by the business magazine. Myself, I'm interested in why this company values so much. <laughs> but anyway, once we take a look at some of those companies within Europe, I guess that's a quick promo, right? And the business model, perhaps that's something that they're doing, right? From there, let's progress and we'll take a look at Australia. Uh, quickly, right? Uh, I'm looking to understand it. I don't, <laughs> I don't know how far I might as well share that information. If you would ask me, I think this part is very important because uh, everything can go off the rails. And when we're taking a look at business and uh, opportunities in the market, so to say, right? And I would be looking to understand what's happening in Australia. Uh, I thought Australia has a very good business model when it comes to having a company, or for what I understand, it might be a benchmark uh, that would uh, regulate all the prices in the market when it comes to very important medicine, right? So I thought that's that's a function. At least this is what I heard some people tell me, right? So I thought let's do a quick dive and uh, see if that's the case, right? In Australia, the Pharmaceutical Benefit Advisory Committee plays a key role in uh, determining prices for medicines. The uh, PBAC advisor for Australia government with medicine should be subsidized under a pharmaceutical benefit scheme and the appropriate price to be paid for them. The PBAC is national program that uh, provides access to affordable medicine for Australians. So perhaps that's our organization, right? So perhaps that's a model, I don't know, perhaps i never been to hospital other than <laughs> I have taken some people to hospital <laughs> myself. <laughs> I don't know, perhaps when I was little, <laughs> but uh, I did not go to hospitals or anything, right? So the, perhaps that's a process and it might be a very similar process to other governments as well. The PPA is assessed the cost effectiveness of uh, medicine by considering the factors such as the clinical effectiveness, safety and all com comparative cost effectiveness compared to other treatments they use this information to recommend uh, where the medicine should uh, list on the PBs as at all what the price okay so that would be kind of a regulatory measure right so a safeguard right so things not to get out of control if that makes sense that's what I'm taking a look at so I was taking a look at in the beginning of this video uh, uh, operational costs so that would be doctors right how, how much of that can cost right uh, from there we have progress in taking a look at some of the companies who have been doing very well some of the governments we were taking a look at uh, potential solutions we were taking a look at software we take, now we take a look at uh, potentially uh, medicine and how that can work and let's take a look at uh, our closest video with a would take a look at how well this government is performing Australia. Let's take a look at how well it's performing against other governments. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at uh, Australia and, and this article, uh, it's uh, old, right? So perhaps uh, some measures have been taken since then. But quickly, let's take a look at uh, that would be benchmark. So they have a uh, safety measure in case all the prices would uh, become too high, right? I don't know about other governments, including Europe and UK and or America, the uh, places, right? Since sometimes the prices can get too high and you would not necessarily would be able to access a very important medicine, right? But uh, I thought Australia has a very good model, but let's take a look at it. <laughs> Australia injects cost three times, uh, 3.7 times more than the global benchmark says report. Uh, there's a name the Institute finds the price remains almost twice those in UK and 3.1 times higher than the New Zealand, right? So I, it, it's a slippery slide, so I, I think things can get out of control very fast. <laughs> you know, they ask me if things can get to that point, right? Briefly, I can take a look at this article, but this article is something that is old, perhaps. People, as of now, have maybe addressed this issue, perhaps, perhaps. Australian drug price remains unacceptably high, right? Which uh, some medicine costs three times, seven times more 
compared to international prices. A report from the there is a name the institute published on Monday has said uh, this article is 70 years old. Perhaps it's, it's it's not good. It's not bad. If anything, we're taking a look at the process, right? Process would be how governments can prevent of. Uh, 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 mass surprises in the market. <laughs> the institute compared the Australian prices for 19 drugs, which those in the UK, New Zealand, and or Canadian provides. Uh, there's a name there of pounds. If that's important, right? So that was a comparison piece, right, of information and 19 drugs. Well, I don't know the, what would be most important drugs, perhaps not necessarily disclosing that information already, right? Even after the next uh, round of drug prices cuts that will occur in April under the price disclosure policy, Australian price will still be on average three times, seven times higher than the benchmark best price that report found. That's the only thing I like to touch on, right? So that would be benchmarking, right? Benchmark would be set price, perhaps would everywhere. But in some places, if you can, as a business, you might be interested in increasing that price. If you can, why not, right? And uh, <laughs> just be careful of that, I guess. As of now, I'm doing okay, but I don't know. You never know, perhaps uh, in my <laughs> not too far distant future, I might need to pay more attention on my own health, right? As of now, I'm looking after it, right? But uh, worth mentioning and all bringing people's caution when it comes to spending on the medicine, uh, health services, and some of the places and everything that's happening as of now in the world. Thanks for watching. See you next one.